Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am an overcomer, writer, speaker, and God enthusiast. I am fueled by helping women achieve their emotional healing so that they can live the abundant life God has for them. In this podcast series, we provide faith-based inspiration to men from emotional hurt, along with tools and tips for emotional wellness. In your journey, as you apply these tools and tips, you will begin to live the transformed life that you always desired. In fact, you will possess a new you. Hello, friends. I am excited to have you back. I hope you know what time it is. It is time for our wonderful tools and tips. You know how we do. After all that good information from our interviews, we take time out to make sure we didn't miss anything. Our current segment, we've been talking about being treasures in the jars of clay. As we represent Christ, we show sure ain't perfect. No, we're not. Despite not being perfect, we still hold incredible value. Yes, we have been talking about our value. In our value, there are moments where we have to do things to maintain and, dare I say, increase our value. How do we do this? Simply self-care. Let's continue, ladies, to take care of ourselves emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Look at all those lily lees in there. Before I discuss the tools and tips, I want to share how God helped me to be able to take care of myself emotionally and mentally. Early this year, I joined a Facebook group for women podcasters. Each week, we promote our latest episode in a post. I entered my podcast details like I usually do. However, this time it was just a little bit different. I entered my details, and lo and behold, a couple of minutes later, I received a comment asking me if I was the Kimir Baker. I was like, huh? That's odd. The Kimir Baker? Yeah, mm hmm. I know I don't have that many people listening to my podcast. I'm always asking y'all to share and let people know. But anyways, so I was thinking to myself, how am I being referred to as the Come here, Baker? I'm hardly famous. Anyways, I decided to respond. I couldn't lie and say no, because I am the Come here, Baker. I responded yes. Then the person quickly stated that she was about to private message me. I was like, huh? But, okay. Sure enough, she private messaged me. In her private message, she asked if I knew someone. As I read the name, I immediately cried. A flood of memories surfaced. I cannot believe after all this time, someone knew of my old friend. Several minutes later, I finally responded and stated, yes, I knew that person. She then asked if we could speak later in the week. She wanted to ask me some questions. Initially, I was reluctant. I did not know this fellow podcaster. Also, 
how does she know about my friend? She stated that she would explain everything when we spoke. I sat in bewilderment for a long time. I just sat there, just kind of dazed and confused. Again, I asked, how did she know about my childhood friend? Later that evening, I called my mom and told her everything that happened. She quickly stated, do not speak to that woman. This could be a hoax or perhaps the person wants to harm me. I told my mother, it's probably not a hoax because who in the world knew that that person was my childhood friend? Who knew that? The following day, we spoke briefly on the phone. She informed me that she was one of those crime podcasters. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them out there who reported on cold cases. She stated that my name was listed in the police report about the murder of my childhood friend. She then asked if I would be open to an interview. She wanted to learn more about my friend. I was floored by her statements. I didn't want to be interviewed. But I then realized I could finally discuss a side of my friend that no one knew about. Everything written about her was always negative and not completely true. Two days later, we did the interview. I told my side of the story. Of course, I cried several times throughout the interview. After the interview, I was emotionally exhausted. Once again, I was flooded with all those memories, all that hurt and pain. But this time, the outcome was different. This was the first time that someone wanted to know my side of the story. When I was a kid, I never had the chance to express the value of our friendship. I never even grieved my loss. I moved on as quickly as possible. I stuffed everything. Yeah, I will cry every now and then when no one was looking, but I never sat down and expressed my hurt and my loss. I never had the chance to share that no one should endure the type of life and abuse that my friend encountered. I never had the chance to tell anyone that she deserved better. During the interview, I expressed how my family wanted to take her in to give her a better chance in life. I admitted that we failed her. However, the podcaster, she quickly stated that her moving in was no guarantee that she would have a better life. We only had hope, but hope may not have been enough due to the extensive trauma that she endured. When she expressed this to me, it was like a thousand pounds were lifted off my shoulders. After I regrouped, I told my mother of the interview and I shared the same thing, the same insight. You see, for 30 years, we carried a hidden burden. Now, 30 years later, it was also like God saying, I did not forget about that pain. God was like, it is time to let it go. 
it is time to heal. After everything, I kept thinking to myself, man, God, really? You didn't forget about me or my wounds. And to this day, I'm still amazed, not only because of the time factor, but because God knew that hidden place of my heart and my spirit. And he said, Kimir, it's time to heal. As I share this, I want you guys to have a living example to our first tip. I personally experienced it. Tip number one. Sharice shared how the brain protects us from trauma. She also expressed that God does not expose our deeper issues until we are equipped to deal with them. Therefore, when the issues or memories surface, try to remember that God is letting you know that it's time to heal in that area. Tip number two, Sharice mentioned that triggers allow us to know that we are not over the hurt and pain. Unfortunately, if you're stuffing your emotions before the trigger, the trigger is an alarm to indicate that stuffing is no longer a temporary solution. This leads to tip number three. Sometimes you are unaware that you have stuffed deep emotions. Because sometimes it's such a, a habit, we're not aware of the habit that we created. And sometimes you may not know specifically why you're experiencing emotional pain. Therefore, tip number three is take the time to cry out to God, asking for his help to navigate through the pain. He's in the helping business. He loves to listen to us. Tip number four. God gave us rich emotions. Yeah, we have a lot of them. In fact, I was with a group of women, part of our online workshops, and we put up a list of emotions. And I think there is a real, probably about a hundred words that encapsulates our emotions. Thus, the abundance and the richness of what God created within us. Each emotion, they do have a place in our lives. However, when we are not being honest about our emotions with God, we limit our personal growth. When we turn our emotions over to Him, we allow Him to mend the broken places of our being especially our hearts. Tip number five. One method for turning things over to God is by being transparent with him in our prayers. Unlike people, thank you very much, God can handle all that we dish out. Let him have it. Tip number six, while working tips for and five, do not give up. 
It is so easy to throw in the towel. Thus, tip number six is do not stop putting forth the effort for emotional growth. When we stop giving God our pain, we are quickly bombarded with negative emotions that hinder our transformation. I will say, ladies, we're not equipped to hold on and keep those emotions buried within us. It will, they will come out. And usually, they come out and it be kind of crazy. Somebody going to get it. Okay, tip number seven. Please remember, and I spoke about this in the beginning, that self-care includes getting your emotional needs met. You are worth not being last. And I totally appreciate Sharice in the interview where she said, even though her son was going through his difficult period in life, she still went and got help for herself. She didn't bury herself in her son's issues to the point that she overlooked her own needs. I thought that she gave an incredible example of that. Tip number eight. And we heard me talk about this before too. Sometimes we require more help for emotional growth. Sometimes reading the Bible and praying is not enough for the support that we require. Do not beat yourself up about this. There is no shame or guilt in seeking more support from those who can provide better tools to get you to the next stage of your life. And as I talked about in the first podcast about your value, like you're not dead, you still have life. And they're there to help encourage and spur you on in that life. Tip number nine. Counseling aligns with Christian values. I was so grateful when Sharice shared that because when I was growing up, I'll be honest, I learned the complete opposite. Those around me, they always said, girl, just go on read and pray. You're a Christian. Don't you believe in God? I heard that a lot. I was like, yeah, I believe. And as I say this again from the last tip, which is there is no shame or guilt in learning methods to manage our emotions and pain. Let's just keep it simple. It's not about telling God that he's not enough. It's about saying, God, how can I stay aligned with you? Because right now, my emotions trying to kick the tail out of me. And I ain't trying to have my emotions win in my life. It happens. Tip number 10. We made it to the final tip. I'm excited about the final tip. And I will also say, ladies, tip number 10. This is nothing new. We've been talking about it numerously on the podcast. But I like the additional things that Sharice shared. And therefore, tip number 10 is all about finding and having safe relationships. These safe relationships are included in us having the support that we need in our journeys. I liked, and I must say it again, I liked how Cherise provided a tip for discovering those safe relationships. She stated, open up little by little. Each time 
you provide more information, take note of how the person is responding to you. If the person responds with care and willingness to be involved in your life, as well as sharing about their own life or her life, then continue to open up. Sharice revealed that it's okay if the person is not equipped to be a deeper source of support. It's also okay to continue to do fun things with the person, but you're not going to tell them your deep, darkest secrets because they're not equipped to get you through the next part of your journey. And in our conversation, we also talked about pushing through the relationship finding person. I said it because so many times we get hurt, we shut down, and we stop pursuing someone who can help build and guide us through our journey. And yes, finding the right person requires stamina. It requires continually seeking. And I will also add, and I think I said that in an interview, is as you're in that seeking mode, asking God to bring the right person to you and to open up your eyes and understanding to who that person should be. Sometimes we do just need just a little help. And he's in the helping business. I don't know if I told you that before. Well, ladies, I thank you for listening today with our 10 tips, with my example of how God is so sweet and tender to us, to how he doesn't forget our hurt and pain, and how at the right time, he allows us to take that journey so that our deeper emotions can be healed and that we can have the peace that we're seeking. And I'm stressing that again, because I want you to see that God does not give up on us. And I'm asking you to not give up on him. And those moments where it's hard to see him, it happens. It's normal. But just keep pushing through. Keep talking to him and allowing him to dry your tears and to heal your pain. All right, now, I want you guys to come back next week. We're going to start our next segment. We're going to talk about being worthy because during this season, it's so easy to forget, again, our value. I just want to stress again, and you all hear me stress it throughout the year because this has been a crazy year, that we are valued, we are loved, we are cherished, and we are worth taking care of ourselves. See ya next time.